Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another installment in this series, loosely series, uh, Five Favorites. I started it a couple of months ago um, with five novels by black female authors. Uh, I will leave a link to that video down below if you are interested. And today I'm featuring, again, five favorites. And it's a Sunday and not normal. The, the normal schedule would be that I film a recent reads on Sunday, but I bumped that video uh, to Wednesday for obvious reasons. You know, Supreme Court made decisions that, well, irk me, <laughs> to say the least. But I'm not going to talk politics because this is a book channel. But what I will do is I thought, why not feature five books with a, a feminist tale that I really like, uh, that I would say are five more or less recent favorites. Um, because the first inkling, of course, after the decision was, you know, to talk about books like The Handmaid's Tale and Red Clocks and uh, th these dystopian uh, female dystopian books that are, you know, books I would say, uh, of the category, told you so, look at this book. But then a good friend of mine, <laughs> we had a discussion about hopeful literature. Uh, it was about nonfiction, but still. And I thought, she has a point. Why not feature five books where women actually overcome all kinds of obstacles against all odds? And that is not to say that I'm naive and, you know, uh, unicorn-like, everything will be fine, everything will work out. No. But maybe we need a little bit of a, not, not so much the, the hopeful message, everything will be all right, but we can do something. There's more we can do uh, maybe than we think. That That is the, the gist of this message. Uh, so five books that I really love that feature women who turn out to be stronger uh, than they might have thought. And the first one um, might not surprise you if you follow my channel for any length of time. It's a 2018 novel by Canadian writer Miriam Taves, Women Talking. Um, and this one is also based on real events. So I thought that is a perfect um, opening for this video. Uh, between the years 2005, 2009, uh, in a quite remote, um, uh, secluded religious community, a Mennonite community, women were drugged and raped at night. And it took quite a while for them to figure out what happened because they don't, they didn't really have any memory. Turned out that some of the men in the community actually were the perpetrators. This is the premise of the book uh, that Miriam Taves takes and then she opens once the men had been arrested and brought to town and now the women gather secretly uh, to talk about what happened but more over to decide what they want to do, whether they want to forgive the men, whether they want to fight against the men when they come back or whether they want to leave. Those are the three options. The women in this in this community are rather powerless. They can't even read or write, but they want to keep minutes of these secret gatherings in the attic uh, of a barn. And there is one guy who is almost as powerless um, as they are, even though he is a man, but he is an outcast for various reasons, and they ask him to keep minutes. So this is a book um, about abuse but also about women coming together and deciding their own fate. I thought it was brilliant. Um, it is infuriating, but also has this hopeful message um, of female power, especially when we come together. I think that's a, a, a theme of more than one book in, in this um, collection, that it's about um community female community when we come together we are more powerful than if we are alone yeah duh so women talking by miriam taves uh the next one is historical fiction and it was one of my favorite 
absolute favorite reads uh, two years ago, and I have since recommended this book to everybody who wanted to hear it or didn't want to hear it, and that is Anna, Anna Marie Crowhurst, The Ill Illumination of Ursula Flight. The book is set in the second half of the 17th century. Ursula is born in 1664, um, and to a quite wealthy family, and her father is... Um, yeah, uh, progressive in the sense that o Ursula actually gets a kind of an education, mathematics and things like that. But in the end, it's even with that progressive father, her fate uh, is that of many uh, girls and women. In, and during that time, she is married off to a much, much older guy because that suits the family. Uh, it's a horrible marriage, uh, abusive, and Ursula, actually, what she wants to do is become a playwright. And this book um, is her journey to freedom, if you will. I mean, that's a, a bit of a spoiler, I, but illumination, I mean, the whole cover is hopeful. And it's witty, it's very open, I mean... Ursula talks about uh, sexuality, about her desires. Uh, there is plays, little pieces, parts of plays into uh, uh, into first into the book when she sort of observes what happens. I thought it was just an absolute delight to to read this. And again, the hopeful message is not everything will turn out fine. No, no, no. She had to undergo definite hardship and she had to fight for it. Uh, but it's more the possibility that makes the book hopeful. So The Illumination of Ursula Flight, 17th century historical fiction, just delightful and wonderful, and it will warm your heart. Um, the next book is probably, yeah, in a way, the least hopeful uh, because it... Um, it centers a lot around uh, the abusive uh, uh, life that women have to undergo through the century, and that is Evie Wilde's book, uh, The Bass The Bass Rock. Um, Evie Wilde is an Australian author, and I I really love her work. And this one um, is, I think, a 2020 release. Yes, 2020 release. Um, it won the the Australian uh, the Stella in Australia, which is sort of the women's prize for for fiction and nonfiction Australian literature. Um, and it it is a, a multi not multi generational because the women are not related in in terms of family, uh, but it is. Um, over the century. It starts with the witch in the 17th century and goes up to the present day and how women are treated and looked upon and judged, whether, you know, as a witch or whether you are uh, an independent woman after the Second World War. But in the end, there is this core message about if women come together um, and you know, help each other, support each other, uh, uh, show solidarity, then there is hope. I thought the story was really, really engaging. This um, tale that spans centuries, so to speak, uh, but each woman was still um, a real individual, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's it's not a very thin book, but still, if you talk 17th century, if you have five or six tales, uh, it, it, you don't have that many pages as an author. But still, uh, Evie Wilde was able uh, to uh, make these women come alive through the century. So I, I definitely uh, can recommend that. If you want to be maybe a little bit subdued on the hopeful message, then this book might really speak to you. Uh, the next book, I don't have a physical copy, so I will uh, put uh, um, a picture up here, The Bread the Devil Need. Um, it's a Trinidadian story told in the Trinidadian vernacular, Creole, 
and uh, it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize. Didn't win. I thought it should have won because I thought it was one of the best books on the list. But anyway, it is a story set in the present day about um, um, a, a 40 ish year old woman who seems to be very strong and very independent if you look at her from the outside. But it turns out there is obviously her life is much more complicated and she has uh, an abusive husband and trying to navigate her way through this life. Uh, and I will, because this is a quite a, um, um, a plot heavy book, so I'm not going to tell you more other than that it is in the end a hopeful story. Um, I loved um, um, Alethea's voice. Uh, it's told from her point of view, and I, I just loved her spirit, um, her power, even though she was, um, you know, she was not Wonder Woman or Superwoman at all, um, but she had strength uh, and find found strength in a way that she might not have thought possible. So I, I, yeah, I can certainly recommend it. And if you are maybe a bit hesitant, because I, I said it's written in Creole, in the vernacular, if you know me, I'm normally not a fan at all of books written entirely in a dialect or in a certain vernacular, but here it really works. It's enhancing the main protagonist's voice without being, uh, you know, getting old, so to speak, when you are over the halfway point or something. So I, I can highly, highly recommend uh, The Bread the Devil Need. And the last one uh, is a debut novel uh, from a, an, um, a Canadian, another Canadian author, Amy Wall, We Jane. Uh, I read this book uh, in, I think, two years ago, yeah, 2021, probably came out 2021, um, uh, and it is about, it's also based uh, partly, or inspired, I shouldn't say based, but inspired partly uh, by real events. When before Roe v. Wade, so before 1973, when abortion was illegal, like it is now, but at least federally, uh, there was this, uh, in Chicago, there was this collective called um, the Jane Collective. And that was a collective of women who helped other women from all over the United States to get safe uh, and medically, uh, medically safe uh, abortions. Um, I will leave a link to the, uh, the Wikipedia. You can check that out. So Amy Wall takes this historical fact, and this book was written before Roe v. Wade was overturned, so it was it's kind of, you know, foreshadowing what would happen. Um, and she follows two uh, women, a young woman and her older friend, who travel uh, to uh, Newfoundland, where they both come from, in order to establish uh, a present day. Jane Collective. That's that's the gist of it, uh, and why this is important and how this would work is then you know as we go along in the story we will we will uh, learn that. And when you know when the book came out, we of course we didn't know um, what would happen, and this is Canadian and not U.S. Uh, but the, the idea behind it is uh, was not so much that uh, legislation would change significantly, uh, but that maybe um, we will, we are heading for a dystopian future for other reasons, uh, with no medical service, and then we need women uh, uh, who have the medical knowledge to help other women. So We Jane uh, by Amy Wall is this, yeah, the look into the future. Uh, what we could do if we want to um, medically help 
women get safe abortions. I will also, by the way, leave a link uh, to the organization, the NGO uh, run by a friend of mine, Rebecca Gompertz. Uh, she is a Dutch uh, physician originally, and she founded Women on Waves. Uh, they travel with a big ship uh, uh, to countries where uh, abortions are illegal in order to provide services. Um, and the ship and Rebecca are mentioned in the book. Uh, so I thought uh, if you're reading the book, you might be interested in this link uh, to her uh, website. So these are five books that inspire me uh, to remain fighting to remain hopeful in a fighting sense. Um, and thank you, Doris, <laughs> for inspiring me not to only look at the, you know, uh, the negative books, the books that are um, give us the, the bad worldview, but to also look at the positive side. Anyway, I hope you liked my five favorites. If you have any other book, books by women that inspire you, let I mean about women finding their way, uh, let me know. I'm looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.